Hello everybody, here's your Strategy Wolf and welcome back to another episode of Strategic Command American Civil War. We are going into the next turn versus the opponent, I think it's the 10th turn, and uh, let's have a look together, see what happens, and yeah. So last uh, week, or last turn, we saw the um, unfortunate capture or surrender of Fort Monroe, so let's see how this is going to affect our current situation. Let's go into replay. Ah, Jefferson City again, as expected. Is it going to fall this turn? Again not. Okay, this is crazy how long Jefferson City holds. Oh. Further pressure at the Potomac. Okay, naval movements and no big new events. Let's see what what else the turn brings. Fort Monroe port damaged from shore bombardment, so they attacked it. Brigade suffers attrition losses. I guess this is next to Cairo. Let's see. Navajo warriors clash with the Fort Wingate garrison following a horse racing dispute. Okay, so probably Navajos turn more towards the Confederates, I assume. Pro Union bandits cause disruption in Missouri, and Union warships and Hampton Roads blockade Norfolk as always. And we can produce Marines now. And the Johnston AQ HQ is ready to set up. Okay. As always, I'm going to have a look uh, what's going on, make my decisions and uh, go get my ideas, strategies and so on. And I will be right back with the results of this thoughts. Okay, everybody, I'm back with my conclusions and the analysis of the enemy's turn. Let's have a short look what happened. Mainly, the main interesting thing is that some units gathered here next to Cairo, so like, apparently they want to conquer it back, not such a big of a surprise. And this unit tries to escape from the former out of supply pocket. Uh, apart from this, nothing special, some skirmishes over here, but yeah, we'll get to this later. So, as we're used to, we're gonna start here, or uh, down here actually, in New Mexico. So. Here we're still in a stalemate situation, slash I can't really attack, um, especially not with these tiny forces, so what we're gonna do this cavalry is just gonna take Ojo de Vaca, and yeah, actually maybe next turn and maybe get the brigade as a reinforcement here as well, so maybe we can put uh, some pressure up on this regiment and move up to this pass soon, I kind of hope so, let's see. Okay, so much about this. Then let's go to Texas. Um, as you remember, we had these rangers here. We're gonna bring them to Houston. So here's a railway. So next time we can transport them by rail, probably somewhere in this area. I think this is where we want to have them actually. So yeah, rangers to Houston. This is Texas. Let's go to Indiana or like the Indian territories here. The Choctaw can attack Fort Washita. I mean, it's a 1-1, one -one, so probably not the best deal for us, but I kind of hope to get them slowly exhausted down here, so maybe over time we can beat them. So let's see. Here we are in a kind of better position, as you remember. I'm just a little bit surprised that I can't bring these dudes here into our HQ control. Look, only this one is indicated, but okay. Um, what am I, set mode, auto assist, so anyways, so let's try to, we can attack with two units, so maybe next turn we will attack from this side, so no river bonus, so that's maybe better, and even bring those better, yeah, this regiment can't really hurt our HQ, so, yeah, I hope that these units will be able to catch Fort Gibson, actually, that would be nice, so much about that Missouri, um, yeah, as obviously we're gonna refresh here Jefferson City to five again. However, you see that the morale and readiness is lowering every time they attack and by every refresh, and the supply is also like cities taking damage, so only supply four anymore. It's not going to last so much longer, however. I'm still surprised how much it, how long it lasts, and considering this, I'm kind of tempted again to push up here. But I think, no, it's not really, it's just, it's gonna be annoying though for the enemy and give us more time, but 
to be at some point something in me also wants the like Missouri to fall finally so I can take care of these like take this cavalry and uh, yeah get the supply routes going so I want some clearness here but yeah I don't know no we stay here uh, be careful let's see what happens maybe next turn this HQ can hold is its position for the moment being same here yeah exactly so let's have a look here um yeah where we had the surprise of taking cairo without any resistance again in our last turn or the turn before oh uh, yeah anyways and yeah this dude here like this brigade here with supply zero tried to escape and yeah therefore we're definitely gonna try to hurt it as badly as we can a little bit of luck we can destroy it no we cannot sad and yeah the question is shall we remain here for an uh, i mean this is probably going to die with supply zero i'm not sure i guess you highly assume so so this is fine question is shall we retreat and i kind of think so the job is done if this one dies nice otherwise it still costs a lot to refresh it and it will i mean we can't really withstand to be honest with this cavalry division an hq with two fields that can attack us and it's kind of precious the cavalry division also since we also want it, we need a tier to take care of the supply lines and in general so let's retreat actually i mean the cairo was taken so the F, uh, fighting spirit objective is achieved and yeah for oh, do we get any strategic bonus kind of control with this we control the the river up here so we could even use the boat to get up here which is halfway interesting for the moment when Kentucky joins the war it happens soon so it might be an interesting idea so we can use the boat to disrupt here the <laughs> even attack maybe the transports or to disrupt ah no the harbor is not under control so we can't disrupt the supply line here I am having two ambitious plans right now and I think this is going to be too heavily damaged so you know let's let's be secure rather. Back over the Mississippi, the cavalry the cavalry raid has fulfilled its mission. Uh, here's another transport, interesting. And those dudes here they can New Madrid is not essential, so let's just put them here. And then next turn I think I take the cavalry down here potentially so or here in this area so in case of Missouri fall they will go up here and to help to control this eastern part of Missouri Missouri nice stuff I mean if I was greedy I could declare war in Kentucky and move up to destroy this brigade but I think it's definitely not worth it especially since we have no real good units around here that could have helped us out so no okay so much about the myth and as well as the west so let's go to Virginia our main front at the moment and yeah we saw some attacks here especially this one that I moved in last position is the only attack I mean it's kind of an attack over the river I'm not 100% sure how the how this affects the attack anyways this one needs to be strengthened to 10 again so well this one we will bring to 10 good thing is you see that the other attacks don't really bring a lot of success so that this one because we have a bad morale i don't want to have this brigade to have such a good prepared attack so i'm doing some kind of counter offensive just to weaken this a bit oh nice two for them one for us like a little bit better than the uh forecast so this is nice at least um yeah this one these two are quite a little bit damaged and won't be really able to attack this one hard uh, I observed that basically these dudes here are out of HQ range, same as here, so I'm gonna move up the HQs a bit, this one here. And so it has these ones under control. And this one here. Then we can take up Polk in this area. Since we don't need him down here yet, so I think he's quite flexible. How far is his range? So three command range. So yeah, let's see where we need the cavalry actually. 
let's have a look how the supply situation develops. Oh, actually, the supply is even way better with this kind of setup. As you see, a lot of nines, this is optimal, a great supply situation. So we definitely keep them like this. What are we going to do with our cavalry brigade, the heroes of Alexandria? Maybe talking about the heroes of Alexandria, like I wrote it already in the let's play in the video, but I realized just by when cutting it and watching the replay again, that when we had the three brigades trapped here, one escaped via transport and I, arrogant as I was, I insulted the enemy for being a beginner. Instead, she did a really good job here. So actually we just trapped two brigades here. So nevertheless, these are still heroes, of course. So, Question is the like Cumberland, yeah, I guess there's troops here, but let's use them these guys for some spying. We got this last turn, we got these partisans here that spawned because the enemy took this area and we have partisans here, so they spawned and the enemy retreated. So that's actually quite nice because they really don't suffer that much from supply issues. So we can easily take this area back and have actually a perfect little reconnaissance unit here, which is very useful. And I really wonder where the enemy actually did. He, did she just withdraw all the troops that were spawning here in West Virginia? I mean, this is not pre this is not very like precious, but still, I'm surprised. So yeah, this is great actually. So let's take Philippi back. Oh yeah, because it, even it provides us some MPP. Let's continue here actually. Take this regiment to Sutton to refresh, but I kind of want to position it here. These Rangers. Gonna keep here. Or is the supply situation? Oh no, actually they stay here just in the back and five as a reserve kind of. And they have a lot of action points, so we are kind of flexible and this brigade just stays in Charleston, that's fine. Um due to these partisans, I don't really need to protect the bridge here right now, so I'm I'll be open or happy to take them even down up here to the Potomac. Let's do some reconnaissance here. Oh, and what, what Cumberland not really being affected. So I have to find out, well, please leave me a comment if you know this, because as, as mentioned several times, there's the Potomac River crossing event. If I cross it, that the enemy spawns a lot of uh, volunteers in the moment in Maryland and so on. However, I don't know if this also counts for crossing the Potomac over here. So, of course, an unprotected fighting spirit objective would be not of logically interesting for us. But yeah, let's see what happens. Let's move up here. And these dudes to provide a little bit better supply here in this area next to Winchester. So great stuff here. Once again, I'm really happy about the situation. Even more happy I'm about this kind of gift that we got last turn with Fort Monroe, which really drives the enemy away from Richmond and basically controls the entrance to the James River. So because of this, I was also thinking where to put these, this brigade. And it's gonna be stationed here. And on the long term, I'm also definitely going to station another brigade down here. As well as probably here. But this has priority since now and here. Like the security of Fort Monroe and Norfolk is now of utmost importance. Since if I control both of these cities and the harbors respectively, the entrance to the James River is fully under our control. And therefore Richmond is kind of safe, which is a great thing. And we don't have to worry so much. So this is like, should be number one priority of our sea um, yeah, defense. Same here with Elizabeth City, so yeah, to keep them away from uh, Richmond should be priority number one, and therefore this is should be protected. However, if she decides to land somewhere down here, we can't protect everything, but this is by far less dangerous or important than this now. And since here's rails anyways, we could use them also as strategic reserve. So long term, bring this brigade over here, and we will reinforce with further units, especially if some brigades here can be like taken out and replaced by divisions and so on. But for the moment, suffer. And another happy thing where in the aftermath, after last we attacked, remember this um, HQ that ex uh, evacuated from Fort Monroe and it wanted to do this exchange with uh, this gunboat since I calculated it's more expensive for her. But somehow she oversaw it, and even the frigate, frigates were uh, close to it, rather attacked the harbor of Port Monroe instead of... Um, I was just checking if there's uh, light towers actually possible, sorry for the distraction. 
Anyways, so I'm kind of happy these ones survived because in the aftermath of the turn I was sad that I lost them, but especially since we also lost, well, I don't know actually what happened to this one who was stationed here while they took it while I went, so yeah. So let's retreat here and hope it's not going to be stopped by other Union ships. So at least we have another gunboat here for the defense or for the fleet and being concept, which is nice. And yes, it managed to escape. Wonderful. Okay. So actually, like talking about the map and so on, this is kind of it. As again, we have convoy raiders over here, convoy raiders over there, but we can't do anything about it. Haven't really done anything special. So we are left with 1295 MPPs, which is really, really nice. And I have already some plan for the spending. So let's go to the purchase area. And as the, we have, I'm constantly uh, thinking, oh, new units. <laughs> okay. This unit goes actually to, as I was complaining about the lack of commands here, and Kentucky is going to join soon. So we're definitely putting it to Nashville. So we have Johnson over here. Nice. Um, yeah, back to what I was just saying. I'm debating very much when or if I should start investing in diplomacy as well, because we can have a look here. Um, I feel like I have to check and compare to the last turn that by we have now the events or the chances of quite big chances of increasing um, relations with the Europeans. So I think France is already 16%, which is nice. At some point it could be interesting to invest. However, it's 200 MPPs in invest, which is a lot. And I think that the Union already invested, so I don't know where she invested, so it would be actually nice to see Union hits UK or something. So I don't want to invest now, have luck, get a good bonus, and then see her like dropping it again. So I would rather see her investing at a low level, making a drop, and then I start investing heavily or something. Plus I have to think about it. But it's absolutely on my mind. However, we are still at the moment where we where I feel like we have partially initiatives, we can use open ground and therefore we just basically need units. So I keep on investing these days. And since we have actually quite a lot left over, let's purchase three divisions. And I was thinking about the cavalry division as well, which could be very, but they're expensive. And by, I mean, they can be very useful as you saw. However, I kind of decided to get go for the cheap version, which is either the Brigade, of course, which is really weak, or in this case we go to Indian troops of the Creek, um, just to get another cavalry unit over here, uh, not over here, down here actually. The Creek should be in Tulasi, so in this area. I feel like just I can use flexibility and movements, especially in Missouri and this area. So yeah, another Indian unit can't be too bad. And they're 100 MPPs cheaper than the cavalry division. However, a little bit, uh, they have one action point less, a little bit weaker values here. So they're slightly worse than normal cavalry divisions. However, for the moment, I'm happy with those, especially since they're cheaper, which leaves me another one. I can have a look, they're coming December, okay. Uh, which leaves me another 100 MPP I want to, <laughs> we were talking about diplomacy before, which I want to invest into the Apache actually, since they're at 0%, and yeah, maybe one shit and a lucky hit would be nice to definitely take them to our side, and they are uh, in New Mexico, Arizona, as far as I know here, this is the Apache Pass. There will be Californian troops coming by event during this pass, uh, through this, not during, through this pass, um, to have Fort Bow defended or it's like an extra cavalry unit here could be very useful. So 100 MPPs in Apache, I think, is an interesting choice or idea. Why not? So basically, we are done with the investments. So also kind of done with the turn. Um, just for info, because I also had another look on it. Let's have swift overview over the graphs what happened in the last turn since i'm not showing it every time so for us now yeah, we're losing a little bit the convoy income is increasing oh wow oh i didn't see this coming to be honest is this due to the new uh, uh is this due to the new better improved situation or relations with the europeans no 
I'm surprised. Maybe I will see it at the end of the turn. Anyhow, um, back to the graph. So we are checking us. Okay. Anyways, no raid is active. Research and diplomacy. You see, here's where we spent our last invest in research. So we are we spent. 2050 we had something going on already so we had the maximum already if you compare to the americans okay they followed now they did the americans the union and basically they invested more now but a little bit later so we should still have a little bit of an edge and i believe they're not at the maximum yet whilst you see the investment in diplomacy was way bigger actually 200 here so ooh, um looks like small investments in diplomacy so mainly apparently into indians or states so no great power diplomacy going on from the union so maybe my apache was yeah a little bit wrong spent but let's see maybe i'm lucky so who knows so actually this leads me to the idea maybe investing in the great powers could be quite interesting plunder nothing's going on mpp is kind of interesting you see the collected income spent income on units and lost units this is the case for the unions you see quite we caused some damage here which is very nice however income and spent units is like still above it let's have a look at our graph um i don't know why this dropped so so <laughs> radically right now this i think this is just a problem or mistake with the depiction in the end however we collected we collected more how can this be maybe to the, through the cotton sales and the enemy is getting stronger and stronger however we definitely lost less and we already invested more new units so yeah <laughs> in the long term i'm gonna be outproduced for sure but for the moment it's nice to see that we might have still some initiative and, and a similar size of arms army strength or so on and yeah last look at the fighting spirit the enemy went below 90%, which is really nice to see. I guess this was maybe Cairo and the Fort Monroe. So this is really great because this also in, uh, um, improves our quality of troops. Slash, um, yeah, their, their quality gets worse. They fight worse. And while, whilst our fighting spirit is going back towards the 100 now, and the longer we control Richmond, it can even grow over 100%, which is beautiful to see. Yeah, so much about... Okay, we can actually... If you want to compare the size, they definitely have a stronger <laughs> navy. No, they have more ports. I'm sorry. Hmm. I wonder why these uh, numbers stay the same. Oh, this is the oh, this is the, the direct comparison. I actually do have more units out there. But I don't know, this might be deceiving as you see I have tons of these tiny forts that are basically worth nothing for the moment, whilst the enemy has fewer of those. Okay, anyhow, yeah, just for your info, you saw the statistics. Uh, good stuff. And yeah, then I guess see you in the next term. Uh, leave in the comments what you think about what's going on, how this is going to develop. I'm happy about strategy suggestions as well or questions. Um, if you haven't done it, please subscribe and so on. And then see you in the next episode. Um, thank you for watching and have a great time. Bye. Oh, actually, sorry. Once again, I'm too um, too early with my goodbye words. So stuff is still happening. <laughs> okay, Haiti allows Union warships to use the port of Cape Haitien. Uh, shouldn't be too big of a problem for us. Pro-Union bandits cause disruption. Yeah, these areas are basically meaningless to us. Norfolk, the same stuff as every week, my turn. And some um, disruption of blockade runners and the UK con convoys. Unitarian forces win the Battle of Pavon, ending the civil war in Argentina. Uh huh. And we get some success in infantry tactic development. Nice. Okay, and we collect 1335 MPPs. Let's just have a quick look where the extra convoy income is coming from. Maybe I get more blockade runners these days. I'm not 100% sure. However, I have good income. I'm quite happy about this. So, yeah. Okay, that's it. Finally. Once again, if you liked it, please uh, follow me. Give me a subscription. And uh, otherwise, thank you for watching and see you next turn. Bye-bye.